What's up everybody? Good morning from Islands of Adventure here in Universal Orlando. It's a great morning. It's absolutely beautiful. It's actually a little chilly outside. But this morning I'm specifically here to take advantage of a hack or a pro tip, call it what you want, that I never knew about. How to essentially beat the crowds into Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. So you may know this and in case you don't, if you are staying on Universal property, you can get into the theme parks one hour before general admission, before the park even opens. Something I've never taken advantage of and I had no idea until I was reading over the fine print of my annual pass is I'm actually allowed in with the resort guest of Universal Studios just from being an annual pass holder. So that is another major perk of being an annual pass holder here at Universal Studios. And it helps me take advantage of some of the rides I feel like I can never get on, such as Hagrid's motorbike, which I'm probably gonna head over there right now. But I'm also here today to explore everything Butterbeer. I love it, everything Butterbeer is amazing. But they also came out with some new Butterbeer fudge. So when we first scanned into the park, we did our normal getting it into the park. But then once you actually step inside, they have you go two different ways. There's early admission for resort guests and annual pass holders. And then there's all the other guests. So the, all the other guests have to wait until the park opens at nine o'clock. Since I'm in Islands of Adventure today, they had the resort guests and annual pass holders go through Dr. Seuss land. Uh, all the other guests had to go toward the Hulk. But it also seems like <laughs> everybody who's come in has had the same idea. They're either running to Velocicoaster or Hagrid's motorbike. And normally I wouldn't do butterbeer this early. Well, there's never a wrong time for butterbeer. But I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of butterbeer today for breakfast. So this is the line for Hagrid's right now. <laughs> and it seems like it's really, really long. Like I feel like everybody rushes here, obviously to get on this attraction first. It's definitely the most popular attraction, I feel like, next to Velocicoaster. So Velocicoaster is the more newer attraction, but Hagrid seems to be holding its weight as probably one of the more popular attractions here at Universal Studios. Let me know in the comments what you prefer, whether it be Hagrid's motorbike or Velocicoaster. I love them both. Personally, I prefer Velocicoaster, but Hagrid's is more than just a roller coaster. It's an experience. Dang, and even with the early admission, it's still a 90 minute wait for Hagrid's. So keep that in mind. If you do get here early, you still may be waiting for some time. And I did hear somebody say that Velocicoaster is only 10 minutes. So I guess I'm going to have my cup of coffee by riding Velocicoaster. I'll do Velocicoaster and then I'll jump into some butterbeer madness. But this is also a nice perk too, taking advantage of the empty park or the empty er park, especially because we're going through Dr. Seuss land all the way around through Harry Potter world. As you get closer to Velocicoaster and the other side of the park where all the other guests were filtered through, everything's completely empty. So it's a great opportunity for any kind of photo ops or just enjoying the park ambiance. Yeah, there's no turning back now. 10 minutes for Velocicoaster, hell yeah. And it still says a 10 minute wait time. The single rider line is even closed. So hopefully you'll be able to just jump right on. Velocicoaster is the perfect way to wake yourself up for a full day in the park or if you need that quick afternoon pick-me-up The two launches on Velocicoaster are absolute everything that second launch where it takes you up and over the top and spins you and you get such a Beautiful view of the park is absolutely incredible And now I'm heading back to Hogsmeade and Hogwarts to get all things butterbeer and the park is still not open yet It's only 852 which means I even have some time to either do Velocicoaster again with a short wait, or I could check on Hagrid's again, but it seems, well, I mean, actually, it seems like the line has gone down just a little bit, maybe? All right, even without seeing that line here, it just looks like they filtered everybody in through the queue, because now it's even at a 105 minute wait. And to get all my butterbeer, I'm probably gonna head into Hogshead, but first, I'm gonna take a look over at Honeydukes and see if that's where they're hiding the butterbeer fudge.
So here's the new butterbeer caramel fudge that we're definitely gonna try. All right, so we've got our fudge. And for right now, I'm actually just gonna head into the back of Hogshead. And here we have the butterbeer set up. I've got my frozen butterbeer, which I love. I've tried it before, but I'm really gonna break it down this time or pay attention. Then there's the hot butter beer, which I've never tried before. And then of course the newest menu, or the newest item on the menu is the butterbeer caramel fudge. And I think I'm gonna start with that. I love how my finger is just waving in there like my magic wand. All right, so the butterbeer fudge is pretty tiny, but it's really cute. It fits in the palm of my hand. This is a prime example of make sure you chew your fudge. <laughs> it's definitely that consistency, the caramel consistency. It's very thick, very heavy, but it is delicious. I definitely taste more caramel than butterbeer. Like I said, I feel like it's a, it's a butterbeer caramel fudge bar. I'm not thrilled with it. I'm not blown away by it. It's good. I definitely would get it again if I'm like in a mood for something like solidified and sweet, but I think I need to wash this down with the frozen butterbeer. So just an important tip also, when you are drinking butterbeer or frozen butterbeer, they give you a straw. By all means, take a sip, but don't neglect that foam. It is so freaking good. It tastes like cream soda. Like the butterbeer, I can compare it to cream soda, but actually it's a little bit more on a butterscotch side. So now it's time for me to try the hot version. The uh, team member inside of Honey Duke said it's kind of like a butterbeer hot chocolate. And he prefers it on a morning like today because it is a little bit chilly to Florida standards out here. So we're gonna try that. That is really good. And again, you kind of have, I'm not gonna tip it too close, but you have that foam on top. So this is a completely different flavor than the frozen one. See, now I'm not really sure what the original flavor of butterbeer is like. Like, should it be more like the frozen or more like the hot? Because I don't really necessarily taste butterscotch here. This is like a unique flavor on its own. So I think the real flavor of butterbeer has to go to the hot version. And then there's also a cold version, not the frozen version, but you can get the cold version, which again is kind of like a butterscotch cream soda. So if you're not a fan or if you've tried the frozen butterbeer first, you may want to give the hot one a shot. Now, I know if you're having it in the middle of August or during the hotter months, it may not serve its purpose, but if you're here for breakfast, this seems like it's a great treat or even for a dessert. It's a complete liquid with the foam on top and I'm getting all the flavors again, which, which is completely original. I've never tasted anything like that. And it is absolutely incredible. So I'm a fan of both. When I have to pick between the two, I think, I'm, damn, I've always been such a fan of the frozen butter beer. Like I can't get enough of that. However, now that this is, for me, this is the new new, this is delicious. This is, this may be my favorite version of it. However, because it's Florida, I have to give it to the frozen butter beer. All right, and that's gonna do it for my time this morning here at Islands of Adventure. Keep in mind to take advantage of your annual pass and early admission. You don't have to be staying on Universal Studios property to get the early admission access to the parks. You just have to have an annual pass. Again, the annual pass continues to surprise me time and time again with their amazing perks, discounts, and more. We also got to try a bunch of different butterbeer options, the frozen butterbeer, which has always been my favorite, but I really love the original flavor of the hot butterbeer now. And of course, we tried the new caramel bar butterbeer flavored. Like I said, it's more caramel heavy with a little hint of butterbeer. So if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give a big thumbs up on this video and click that stupid notification bell. This way you get notified anytime I put out some new content. But until next time, this is Mikey Magic reminding you to create your own magic and I hope to see you real soon.